Hello and good morning. Hello, Arrow. This is Doug Carey. What's going on, Mr. Doug? How are you been? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Absolutely fantastic and very excited to talk to you because I believe you're a true historian. I believe that you're also somebody who's been called to do exactly what you're doing, to open up our own senses on this side of the of the book, to, to be aware of the history of our land. Well, I really appreciate that. And it's true. I did feel and do feel called to the story. It's a little bit touchy feely, but I I really do believe I was called to it, and that's not something I talk about a lot, but it's true. Arrow, you nailed it. When when it comes to you, because I I, I too am a book author, and when these ideas for a story or an investigation come to you, I mean, all of a sudden it consumes every bit of your thinking process, and as much as we try to throw it off ourselves, it keeps coming back like a magnet. Absolutely. It's been a nine year, well, at this point, a 10 year journey wow. off and on ups and downs. You can imagine chasing every piece of evidence, trying to find answers. It's been a very consuming project, but I've learned a lot about along the way. And I, I feel that I've grown in the process. So it's been it's been quite a journey. Is it the hunt for information that you really like, you know, digging in and finding out, you know, connecting this with that and, and moving through where, where history has dropped everything off? Yeah, Arrow, that's the most fun part. I love the research, the digging, interviewing people. I was fortunate to spend a whole day with a sheriff in a rural county in California recently. He took me out to a crime scene. I sat in his office and looked through files and photos that no one had uh, had been granted access to outside of law enforcement before meanwhile he was telling me stories from his own career that's the kind of thing i live for as as a reader and and as somebody who who writes uh, these true crime stories do you ever just want to look at the person on the other side of the page and say i understand that you're using this as an escape but activate yourself you too can get involved well, that's interesting you say that. I posted something on my what, my website, a blog recently, entitled The Tragedy of, of True Crime, emphasizing that although true crime is often packaged as entertainment, yep. these are real people and real tragedies. There's nothing wrong with enjoying a good story and being fascinated by it. But you're right. People can get involved. They can get involved by uh, in open cases, by providing information if they have any by simply uh, sharing their 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 thoughts and prayers for the, the families and always keeping in mind that even though true crime is is fascinating and it's a mystery and it's a puzzle it's also real people yeah the Berman murders a double homicide oh my god dude I mean I mean and and it was it was unsolved but somehow some way the speculation reached your writing hand it did and the authorities always had a suspect in mind and they just didn't have enough evidence they felt to pursue criminal charges and that remains the case today no one has ever been been arrested or charged but i follow the the, the path of the case in the book and lay out what the evidence is for the reader to see what there is and what there isn't in the case. It's a compelling story. Yeah. And you don't just stop at one side of the story. I mean, you actually talk to the suspect's sister. I mean, I do a lot of show prep. I, I can't imagine what kind of prep you had to do in order to sit down and have that talk. Well, uh, I actually got two of his wow. sisters to talk, but Arrow, that took years. Uh, and that's part of my methodology. I'm typically, in working on a story like that, I'm not in a rush to get it done. And sometimes people who are resistant at the beginning, over time, when they see that I'm really serious, that I'm even-handed, and that I want to have the authoritative story, they'll eventually say, you know what, we'll talk to Doug. Yeah. You said one of my favorite words, methodology, because so many people, you know, and I'm sure you've run into these people too, they'll go, what do you do? Oh, I want to do that too. I I could do it and you just want to look at them and go you ha it has nothing to do with the outside surface guys it is something that is planted in you it's very uh, very difficult undertaking yeah. to do it right I, I was fortunate because and don't hold it against me but I, I've got a long career as a lawyer behind me and that prepared me with some of the tools and techniques that you need to do the kind of 
digging and to push the push the envelope if you need to. For example, I had to uh, sue a public agency recently <laughs> because they didn't want to turn over some documents and they just kind of blew me off and said, well, if you're going to get that, you would need a court order. And I said, OK, I'll go get a court order. <laughs> and I did. But yeah, it, it takes it. It takes real effort to do it right. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of people at Arrow who just kind of repackage what's already out there. Yep. And, and that's OK. Some of that repackaging can be very effective. But for me, my brain is that I want to do original research. I want the reader to see in in my work facts and and parts of the story that have never been brought to light before. Would that lawyer self, would that lawyer go into the grave and lay in that shallow grave? (laughs) Well, I did do that. I'll tell you why I did that, Arrow. It was because the place where the Burman's bodies turned up is in, is incredibly difficult to get to. It's in a remote corner of Death Valley National Park. You, you need uh, a, a sturdy vehicle to get there. You need some luck to be able to even navigate those roads. Sometimes they're washed out or wow. they're, they're, they're covered by snow. And, and when you do finally get there, although it's a very lonely and sort of a bleak spot, it's also very beautiful. And it's just hard to imagine in literally the middle of nowhere that this heinous crime took place there. So part of trying to adjust my my mindset from the search for the gravesite to when I finally located it, to imagining what occurred there, I ended up just lying down in the grave and staring up at the sky and thinking about when the Burmans were killed and their bodies uh, stacked in that grave. I'm, I'm a big Mother Earth fan. I mean, did you hear, did Mother Earth talk to you at all? Mother Earth did talk to yes. me a couple of times. Again, again, I, I don't like to be too touchy feely because I don't want people to think I'm touchy feely in my methodology. Yeah, yeah. But I did feel that nature was speaking to me. There was one time, for example, when some cicadas called me to a spot where I found some uh, some Indian ruins, some evidence of, of a hunting blind uh, where Native Americans uh, uh, many years ago would do hunting. And it made me think about why the Burmans may have gotten in a vehicle with the suspect. Mm. It's possible that he was offering to take them to see those kinds of artifacts because they had said the night before when they shared a hot tub with some other folks, including the the chief suspect, that they were interested in seeing some artifacts. And when I saw that near the graveside, I thought maybe this was his excuse for getting them there. What did you go through when all of a sudden here comes this link to Cambodia, because that 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 to me is a twist in this story. It, it, it's a twist, and I was just trying to follow the story wherever it went. I had heard that there was this sex crimes case that had emerged out of Cambodia. I had read about it. I, I was a daily reader of the L.A. Times. I I never thought anything of it, and there was nothing that had been reported that connected that that criminal to the Berman case. But it turns out that there were people in law enforcement who knew about the link. They were aware of the other side of the case. It had just never been made public. When I did go public with that, saying that this this fellow that had committed these sex crimes, heinous kinds of crimes, not, not just having sex with underage girls. I'm talking about about the most heinous behavior where you're where you're beating and leaving them bloody afterwards. When I found out that that same fellow was the chief suspect in, in, in the Berman murders and I went public with an L.A. Weekly cover cover story, it did prompt some prison informants to come forward and say, yeah, he's bragged about those killings. Mm. Mm. You know, the more and more I listen to you share your story, the more I realize you're you're a modern day journalist. I mean, you you take the story and you give us more than a than a sound bite at 5 p.m. Well, what I try to do is is what I've characterized as immersive journalism, which is to really get deeply involved in the case. And I have the luxury of being able to do it. As I said, I'm a lawyer by background, and therefore I don't have to bring the 
the pressure yeah. of having to meet a, a, a deadline uh, or even make a living out of the writing. I can do it for the pure joy uh, <laughs> of wanting to pursue these stories. And I don't have to think about, oh, I need to get this done because I need to start on something else. I can go as far and as deep with it as I want. I'm very, I'm very thankful. Yeah. I'm uh, grateful for, for the fact that I'm able to do that. Oh my God! What what? Because I've I've been a daily writer for thirty years. I mean, I, I totally understand it. It's just something that I love to dig in, and some of the subjects that I find are just you know, it's not everyday conversation. But I'm going to make sure that it does. Well, I think that's that's the important thing. For, for me, I was just so drawn to this story because the setting where it took place yes. is just extraordinary. It's one of the most isolated and beautiful spots in the Western United States. This incomparable desert valley and in the middle of this valley that's very difficult to get to and is untouched by time there's this hot springs oasis that oh kind of by word of mouth people know about and it's a, sort of a, a counterculture gathering place you'll see people walking around with no clothes on but it's not a hookup <laughs> spot it's a it's a place where people get back to nature and people of all stripes uh will, will come there it, it you'll see firefighters and hippies and everyone mm. mingling together it's a wonderful spot. And when the Burmans disappeared, and then later when their bodies turned up, it had a profound impact I bet. on the, the vibe of that of that place. And it stuck with me for years because that was a place I loved so dearly. I bring my family to. And how could this happen in a place so peaceful and yeah. isolated that two wonderful, unassuming people would end up on a morning hike, just never coming back and turning up in a grave. How could that happen? Wow. Where can people go to find out more about you, Doug, to get, find out more about the book and to just give you lots of love? Well, I appreciate it, Errol. Uh, it's Doug, D-O-U-G, of course. And then my last name is Carrie. It's a Finnish name, uh, K-A-R-I. So if you go to DougCarrie.com, that's my website. You can get a link, and I think there's even a, a live discount code for being able to get the book. You can read about this case and other cases. I've got case material for anyone who's interested in doing a deep dive on some of the, the facts. There's a lot of content there. And then, of course, just Googling my name, you'll see a lot of things come up, multiple outlets for the book, that kind of thing. You said it took you 10 years to put this book out there, so should we go ahead and put it on the Google Calendar? I'll see you in 10 years for your next one. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am de- <laughs> I am. De- uh, I am working very hard on another project. I'm hoping I will have it done in a year this time. Okay. But yeah, I don't put <laughs> artificial time pressure on myself. And really, Arrow, it's a matter of going to, to the point where I feel that I've really reached the bottom. I've dug as deep as I can go and I've got everything I'm, I'm going to get. And then it's a matter of getting that story down on paper and I'm working on it bit by bit. <laughs> I love it. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Doug. Much appreciated, Arrow. Thank you. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? <laughs> you too.